You're watching CNBC On Demand. In this episode of American Greed, billions of dollars in stolen cryptocurrency. Someone's laundering a crypto fortune. Is it a genius hacker, a state-sponsored terrorist? After six mysterious years, the alleged launderer is unmasked. This is the craziest story of the day, so here we go. Russell Kong, the Versace better win. Crocodile of Wall Street. Heather Morgan, a businesswoman, social media influencer, and journalist with a bizarre alter ego called Russell Kong. I'm a beast. Living on the coast that's east. She saw herself as a real entrepreneur, making things happen. Her husband, Ilya Lichtenstein, a budding tech mogul. He's like an opportunist and a greedy one. They've got it all, and they love nothing more than to put it online. Ah! We called them the Bonnie and Clyde of crypto. Our mission is noble. Yeah, wanna be a mogul? They were either really brilliant or really stupid or just crazy. The government says this crypto odd couple laundered four and a half billion dollars in stolen Bitcoin, smashing records. This is the largest seizure of cryptocurrency ever by U.S. law enforcement. American Greed takes you inside the investigation and online with the self-styled crocodile of Wall Street while the case is still unfolding. Hey, we have an announcement, an update. Could she and her husband have razzle dazzled one of the boldest? And strangest digital crimes of all time. The notion that they could be laundering 4.5 billion dollars worth of Bitcoin blew people's minds. Russell Dunsell. Cryptocurrency, a fledgling market of digital coins, just a decade ago. That has exploded into a trillion-dollar industry. Some people ask, like, is this a new frontier in finance, or is it some kind of goofy Beanie Babies type phenomenon? And the truth is that it's both. The overall crypto market broke two trillion this month. The market grows so quickly that law enforcement can barely keep up. Cryptocurrency is kind of the wild west in terms of regulation. There's a lot of room for criminal actors in this new frontier of digital scammers. One of crypto's most notorious heists occurs on August 2nd, 2016, when someone hacks a virtual currency exchange called Bitfinex. It was hacked for a really startling event. Trading on the digital currency exchange was suspended after that breach was discovered. The stolen currency is worth 71 million dollars at the time. Stealing all of those funds is a curse in many ways because this was obviously a huge amount. And one that was certainly going to attract the attention of United States law enforcement. So, who has the skills, guts, or foolishness to commit such a brazen crime? The crypto industry booms despite the Bitfinex hack, especially in the Bay Area, where Heather Morgan, who presents herself like many other young strivers, dreams of launching the next. Big thing. Morgan's come a long way from her humble Northern California roots in Tehama, California, a town of 400 people. Growing up, I did not have a lot of friends. She reflects on her childhood in a video posted on her YouTube channel, one of nearly a dozen social media accounts in which Morgan shares intimate details of her life. You have 20 kids in the class, and they've all known each other from first through eighth grade. And you're kind of weird and different. You're gonna get bullied mercilessly. She said that she didn't really ever fit in. She had a speech impediment, and sometimes she would get bullied. And people just didn't have like this ambition that she had. And I remember thinking, the ocean, yeah, it's big, but I'm a shark. I belong in the ocean, not in a mud puddle or a pond. Morgan leaves behind the mud puddle and has no intentions of ever returning. She earned scholarships to the University of California, Davis, graduating in just three years with a degree in economics and international relations. She documents her travels to Asia and the Middle East, and begins collaborating after graduation with an economics professor named.
Travis Libert on an academic paper. She had a very quick mind. She was very professional, you know, very put together, very aware of her image, all in the way that you would expect of an aspiring young professional. Though they communicate through Skype and email, Morgan's ambition cuts through cyberspace. There was kind of a restlessness to her, always kind of angling for the next thing. She saw herself as a real entrepreneur, as, as someone who was, like, making things happen. After their eight-month collaboration ends, Lippert agrees to write Morgan a letter of recommendation to PhD programs in economics. But she never takes him up on it. Looking back, I mean, the one thing that does stand out is her signature block uh, had evolved over that brief period, and under her name was economist, entrepreneur, hustler. Morgan closed. They told a friend, I need to go home and make money. So she comes back to Silicon Valley in the startup tech entrepreneur space. Morgan meets a mild-mannered Russian-born entrepreneur named Ilya Dutch Lichtenstein. He's almost the polar opposite of Heather Morgan. He doesn't seem to want attention. Nor could their backgrounds be more different. Lichtenstein grows up in an affluent Chicago suburb called Glenview. His parents had immigrated from Russia to avoid religious persecution. Lichtenstein meets Charles Austin in a computer coding class at Glenbrook South High School. I mean, I would say Glenbrook South is a pretty typical suburban high school where you have some of like the sort of John Hughes archetypal tropes of like jocks, nerds, etc. We're definitely obviously nerds, right? We're not uh, football quarterbacks here, but... And I think he's sort of underrated as like a funny guy because he was probably very quiet and kept to himself. But once you start to like get to know him, it's like, oh yeah, I really like this guy. He's cool. Like, They aren't jocks, but they still like to have a good time. Me and whoever was in our like lunch group at the time would just drive over to my place and play poker for like 40 minutes, keep that game set up, and then come back the next day and keep playing until we finish the game. There was nothing remarkable about him as a poker player. <laughs> like, it's not like he was like, oh damn, he's running the table. But again, he just like fit right in and it was like fun to play with him. Yeah, well, this is something uh, we just stumbled on here. Photos of 2006 prom from the very end of high school. And it's very funny that the comment on these two photos from a friend of his is, Ilya with a eight? I don't believe it. <laughs> I skipped prom to play poker, so it's news to me that he went to it. Lichtenstein majors in psychology at the University of Wisconsin and heads to San Francisco after graduation. He tries his hand at several fruitless ventures, including a Ron Paul website and a brain supplement business. He also had a couple of other websites that were sort of in the dating realm, one called Adult Friend Grinder and another one called FindGeekGirls.com. Uh, so my name is Ilya Lichtenstein. I'm the co-founder of a service called Mixrank. Lichtenstein's fortune improves when he launches a marketing company called Mixrank, getting seed money from backers like Mark Cuban. Lichtenstein's luck changes on the romantic front, too. He finds a soulmate in Morgan, who shares his entrepreneurial drive and sense of adventure. So it seems like they did start like jet-setting pretty soon after they met each other. There's photos of the two of them together in, like, a private jet, standing on the tarmac, him hanging out with a monkey in Hong Kong. She has qualities that he doesn't have. Of she is more social and outgoing, you would expect her to be the make a sort of character out of herself in a way that he never would. Morgan channels her wits and moxie into her own startup, a company called Sales Folk, that helps businesses craft cold email pitches. That was one of the skills that she to be the proudest of because she would send cold emails or finesse her way into connecting with people and getting what she wanted. The company motto captures Morgan's towering ambition. <laughs> I mean, it's like comically meme worthy. Goat is obviously the greatest of all time. Clearly, even in fashioning her branding, she was really leaning into this kind of underbelly of Silicon Valley that's like the weirdest, the so my first question for you is... Lichtenstein offers advice to Morgan and sits for an interview on her company's YouTube channel, while she offhandedly gives friends a hint of what he may really be up to. Heather introduced him as a black hat hacker. A black hat hacker is a type of hacker that pursues exploits with malicious intent. So they not only have these wild sides, but then I think they probably foster that and 
together and, and sort of feed off of that. Morgan posts a testament to her boyfriend in August 2016. I will always love getting into trouble with this crazy guy. The Bitfinet's hack occurs one day later, and someone's about to start laundering all that stolen crypto. Up next on American Green, Morgan unleashes a brash alter ego. But could her lyrics reveal a little too much? It's one of the biggest cryptocurrency heists ever. 120,000 bitcoins, then worth $71 million, drained from accounts in the Bitfinex Virtual Currency Exchange in August 2016. The hackers stashed the currency in a digital wallet, a virtual account guarded by a set of private keys, like a pin code. Whoever had the private keys, they were the only person who was going to be able to do anything with that money inside. But there's a catch. All that loot is hiding in plain sight. Bitcoin was once touted as anonymous, but every transaction gets permanently logged on the blockchain. A public ledger maintained by computer networks. And the strange thing about a cryptocurrency theft is that you can see that these 120,000 Bitcoins worth of fortune have moved into a specific address, but they don't know who the thieves are. It's like just beyond their reach. It's a crime unlike any. Like a huge bank robbery happened, but then the money just sat outside the bank in a locked getaway car. And no one could touch it, no one could solve it, no one could figure out who put it there in the first place. And it just sort of had this lore around it. A small portion of Bitcoins begin flowing five months after the hack. John and Levin co founded Chainalysis, a company that helps governments and banks solve high profile crypto crimes. Money started to move through lots of different intermediary wallets. And money ended up going into Alphabay. Alphabay was a dark web marketplace. So that's essentially like an Amazon.com, but for bad things. You could buy drugs, stolen credit cards. You could pay for money laundering services, and you could even buy poison if you wanted to kill someone. It also offered mixing and tumbling services. These are services in which you, John Doe, can send your dirty cryptocurrency to Alphabay, and Alphabay will then mix it up with other funds that have been sent to it. So it kind of acts, if you imagine, taking your dirty cash, putting it into a washing machine. Meanwhile, Heather Morgan and Ilya Lichtenstein are growing restless. Morgan struggles to keep sales folk profitable, while Lichtenstein suddenly moves on from his startup mixed rank. The couple exchanges the California sunshine for Manhattan's bright lights. Morgan and Lichtenstein rent a $6,500 a month apartment on Wall Street. She furnishes it with animal pelts and taxidermy, including a crocodile skull. Detailing this and nearly every facet of her life with Lichtenstein on TikTok and other social media. This is my current look. What do you think? It reminded you of that really quirky art friend who everybody says has good taste, but you're afraid to tell them they actually have really bad taste. Morgan branches into journalism, contributing dozens of columns to Ink and Forbes. She just sort of willed herself into this expert space. How did she do that? She started writing as if she was an expert, as if she was an entrepreneur, as if she was successful. I made my own path as being both a writer, a software entrepreneur, and a creative. Nearly a year after the Bitfinex hack, Morgan and Lichtenstein are hardly a blip on the Justice Department's radar. But that's about to change. Today, the Department of Justice announces the takedown of the dark web market alpha bank. This is the largest dark market web place takedown in world history. Law enforcement seizes Alphabay's main server in Lithuania. And so suddenly, this thing that had been a kind of, I don't know, black hole in the middle of the blockchain is in the hands of the feds, and they can see all the transactions. According to a complaint later filed, the trove of illicit 
transactions will lead directly to Morgan and Lichtenstein. How will they offer money laundering services? And the records associated with those money laundering services may have played an important role in allowing the government to connect the stolen Bitcoin in this case to Ilya um, Lichtenstein and Heather Morgan. I think that when that Alpha Base server ended up in federal law enforcement's hands, that was probably the beginning of the end. I feel like I live in two worlds. With the but as the feds close in, Morgan hardly lays low. Instead, he announces a new career after complaining of professional burnout. I think I was pretty unhappy. So she started rapping as a way to deal with the burnout. Morgan creates a shameless alter ego. Russell Kong, the Versace better win. Come real far, but don't know where I'm headed. Crocodile of Wall Street. Silver on my fingers and boots on my feet. She's running all over Wall Street in these insane outfits. She's making obscene gestures in very buttoned up areas of New York in broad daylight. While Razzle Khan apparently shells out big bucks on rap videos, IRS agents dissect the blockchain, inching closer to identifying suspects they believe are laundering the stolen money in one of crypto's biggest heists. Not only do blockchains not lie, no matter how they're designed, Cybercrime in general is difficult because there are little breadcrumbs that are left everywhere, lest you're the perfect criminal. Lichtenstein certainly seems to know his way around the blockchain. In March 2018, he forms EndPass, a cyber company intended to secure personal assets. Like it to use. We protect your funds with multiple layers of security, including... You know, they didn't appear to have much traction. Their businesses were certainly not ones that would generate a ton of income. Morgan and Lichtenstein's companies may not be earning much, but that doesn't stop them from generating off to exotic locations on a moment's whim. Their 2019 summer itinerary includes a month in a place that's not a typical tourist hotspot, Ukraine. But are Morgan and Lichtenstein merely on vacation or up to something far more suspicious? Up next on American Greed. The government compares this trip to a spy novel. It's been three long years since one of cryptocurrency's most notorious heists. Hackers stole nearly 120,000 bitcoins from the Bitfinex virtual currency exchange and stashed them inside a digital wallet. Someone's been laundering the currency by siphoning a portion through a dark website called Alpha Bay. But that's just one of many tactics uncovered by the IRS. Another branch of it, though, that's more mysterious goes into a cryptocurrency called Monero. Monero is a secure, private, untraceable currency. It is open source, decentralized, and freely accessible to all. What we see oftentimes in criminal investigations is that criminals who are sophisticated use multiple different forms of cryptocurrency and sometimes move between different cryptocurrencies in order to try and obfuscate the flow of funds. Exchanging one form of crypto for another is a laundering technique called chain hopping. And Monero is generally thought to be pretty untraceable. The IRS has never revealed it can trace Monero, but Andy Greenberg thinks the Bitfinex investigation may show it can. And the government reportedly has some help. There is an entire industry now of companies who pull apart these blockchains to follow the money. I would be very surprised if Chainalysis was not involved in this massive Bitfinex case. Chainalysis co-founder Jonathan Levin declined to comment on whether his company assisted the government's investigation. While authorities say the digital clues left in the blockchain will eventually lead to Heather Morgan and Ilya Lichtenstein's doorstep, the luxury apartment, lavish travel, and elaborate rap videos displayed in their numerous online posts reveal a lifestyle that appears to be far beyond their small businesses can provide. And yet, they show no sign of slowing down. Lichtenstein announces their engagement on Facebook that summer. It's like the most groan-worthy proposal I can think of. He describes hiring an advertising agency to help him propose to my best friend and the woman of my dreams. Ilya took Heather Morgan to Times Square where he had...
all of these billboards up about Rosalcon, who was clearly this alter ego that meant a lot to her. The proposal doesn't come cheap. A Times Square billboard can run from $5,000 up to $50,000. The next month, Morgan delivers a curious speech at a New York City salon series, bragging about having the skills one might need to pull off a crime like the one the feds are now investigating. But it's getting someone to share information or take an action that they otherwise she had a lot of skills of persuasion and she used them for all kinds of intents and purposes. I mean, some of the things that she was talking about was, you know, like crashing people's weddings and stuff like that, or figuring out a way to talk to like a famous person or, you know, things like that. Still, a skill is a skill. The Justice Department later says Morgan and Lichtenstein weren't simply wedding crashers. They used their skills to launder billions of dollars of Bitcoin stolen from Bitfinex. The government points to a trip that Morgan and Liechtenstein took to Kiev, the Ukrainian capital, later that summer. The government compares this trip to a spy novel. It seemed to be kind of their test balloon of, you know, how can we get fake identities delivered? One package was reportedly delivered to a hotel from Vladivostok, Russia, on September 9th. The Justice Department alleges Liechtenstein created files with details information about Russian personas the very next day. The implication is that they had ordered fake identity documents to be sent to them in the Ukraine that potentially they could use if they ever had to flee the United States. The whole thing is always just a knife's edge away of either being James Bond or knock off Austin Powers. They were either really brilliant or really stupid or just crazy. Back in Manhattan, Morgan and Lichtenstein resume business as usual. He launches an investment firm called Demand Path. Morgan expands her digital footprint, pushing content across social media. Another interesting part about her Forbes profile is her bio. She writes, when she's not reverse engineering black markets to think of better ways to combat fraud and cybercrime, she enjoys rapping and designing streetwear fashion. She wrote an article, Experts Share Tips to Protect Your Business from Cyber Criminals. In light of her warning, Razzle Khan's new rap video contains lyrics that sound rather ironic. Phishing in general is where someone will try to get you to hand your password over to them so that they can, in this case, transfer your funds. Rewind that. Like, did, she, did she really just say that? Like, rewind that and play it again. Make sure we heard that right. All this time, the value of the Bitcoin stolen from Bitfinex soars from $71 million in August 2016 to nearly 3.5. Parties are now convinced Heather Morgan and Ilya Lichtenstein are the ones laundering the crypto. Up next on American Greed. Morgan and Lichtenstein head to the altar with the feds right on their heels. Four years after someone began laundering Bitcoin stolen from the Bitfinex virtual currency exchange, Heather Morgan and Ilya Lichtenstein seem to be thriving to friends and family in their hometowns. The handful of people that I've kept in touch with at high school, they definitely saw him as successful. Like, this guy is making money and doing his thing and doing well, yeah. Projecting an image of success on social media isn't a crime, but Morgan takes it to a whole different level. But I also am a writer, I'm a rapper, I designed some streetwear fashion, and a bunch of other stuff with surrealistic art. So I, right now, am living my ideal life that's it razzle dazzle she does this gesture a lot like she goes like this a lot and be sure to razzle dazzle it's like not a pretty look and she loves it she i think was trying to shock people she would talk about gilfs grandmothers i'd like to you can fill in the blank on that grandmother i'd like to baby grandmother but still the sex symbol Oh, Jim, but
Morgan's constant urge to broadcast every facet of her life can grate on her more reserved fiancé. And in some of the videos, he can seem a little bit uncomfortable with being on camera. So I you just keep filming me expecting something to happen. What do you want me to do? You want me to just, like, shove something up my <laughs> and do a little dance? I do still wonder, like, where did that come from? Like, who was she when nobody was TikToking her? She was really loved by this small group of friends and people spoke very highly of her said she was a very loyal friend said she was there for them during some really traumatic life experiences so you wonder how much of it was just escalated for clicks and for online attention i'm a beast living on the coast that's east crocodile waiting for a feast i see an individual who seems to be somewhat detached from reality in the sky because i like to stay high and appears to me to be someone who would be likely to get involved in something like this. I'm a lizard, married to a god wizard. Their view of the world doesn't quite match up with- Weird. Morgan and Lichtenstein don't seem to realize time is running out. Ah! In a government complaint, the IRS shows how it traced the flow of stolen Bitfinex Bitcoin several virtual currency exchanges and foreign email addresses to financial and business accounts belonging to Liechtenstein and Morgan, including their companies Salesfolk, DemandPath, and Endpass. They cashed out of, of about $2.9 million worth of the money. As far as I can tell, I think they largely spent it on themselves. Investigators connect the laundered crypto to purchases made in Liechtenstein and Morgan's names for Uber, Hotels.com, Sony PlayStation, and a dollar Walmart card. So these were very small expenses, not, you know, buying expensive cars or buying a yacht or buying a house, but rather the types of expenses that are indicative of someone who's desperate, who can't actually monetize the, the large amount of funds that they have. It's actually probably easier to just put stacks of $100 bills in a washing machine and launder them through a casino than it is to launder $3 billion of anonymous hacked Bitcoin. The government obtained a search warrant for Morgan and Lichtenstein's email accounts in August 2021. While they're busy planning their wedding. Hey, we have an announcement, an update. The fiancés catch wind of the subpoena in a notice from their internet service provider. It didn't seem to concern them because they go and throw this huge wedding anyway. This is not your typical wedding. This is more like a concert, a festival. Morgan is... No blushing bride at their Los Angeles wedding. She's carried into the ceremony on a royal bed and performs one of her signature raps. But their honeymoon is short. They've been married less than two months when surprise visitors show up. Up next on American Greed, the feds hunt for evidence and they claim the crocodile of Wall Street has no intention of going down without a they had $40,000 worth of cash and plastic bags with electronics inside, and the bag was labeled burner phone. Want more greed? Follow us on Instagram, connect on Facebook, and listen to the American Greed podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We'll be right back. Federal agents execute a search warrant at Heather Morgan and Ilya Lichtenstein's apartment on January 5th, 2022. To launder stolen Bitcoin. They had $40,000 worth of cash and plastic bags with electronics inside, and the bag was labeled burner phone. Agents also find two books with compartments cut into their pages. They're empty. The government suspects this couple hatched an escape plan and accuses Morgan of doing whatever she can to cover their tracks. And as they're going through this apartment, Heather goes to get their cat. Clarissa, you go, As she's going to get the cat from under the bed, she actually pivots and grabs her phone and tries to lock her phone. And they struggled. They had to, like, wrest it out of her hand. The intention, obviously, being that Heather knew that if she locked 
phone, it would be a lot harder for government agents to get into it. Federal authorities are more interested in encrypted files on Lichtenstein's cloud storage account. The government suspects they hold the keys to solving a six-year-old crime. Private keys linked to a digital wallet containing bitcoins stolen from Bitfinex in 2016. The bizarre thing about Bitcoin is that you can like see the money right there and you can't do anything with it. You can't retrieve it until you have those keys. While the government tries to decrypt Lichtenstein's files, he and Morgan hire attorneys at a white shoe law firm called Cahill. Despite their legal troubles, Razzle Khan keeps on tweeting. It's very possible that the defendants believe that that encryption was strong enough to protect them from any law enforcement investigation. And yet, the government says it breaks the encryption on Lichtenstein's files within weeks. They find exactly what they're seeking, according to a criminal complaint, a list of private keys to the digital wallet associated with the Bitfinex Act. The IRS says the wallet still contains nearly 95,000 of the 120,000 Bitcoins stolen from Bitfinex six years earlier. But that's not all they reportedly find in Lichtenstein's files. They found the document of him searching for Russian and Ukrainian nationalities and passports. They found the spreadsheet of all the crypto accounts and the companies that they were linked to, and that was the end. They really didn't stick that landing of like, I would never do something like that, and even I would be putting these passwords and stuff on my computer. Like, come on, man. And I think what that really shows is the confidence that they had in their laundering techniques that they thought they couldn't be identified in the first place. Morgan and Lichtenstein strike a united front in a final selfie on January 31st, 2022, while the government closes in. Scooping up the 95,000 bitcoins in the digital wallet the IRS says Lichtenstein controlled. The value of the bitcoin taken by the Justice Department has risen to $3.6 billion, the largest seizure in its history. U.S. authorities making an arrest in an alleged conspiracy to launder billions of dollars in stolen cryptocurrency. Federal agents arrest Morgan and Lichtenstein a week after seizing the stolen Bitcoin. Up next on American Greed. Russell Khan, Khan earns worldwide attention, but not quite the way she had hoped. The Bitcoin crimes are nothing compared to calling this rap. Always be a goat, not a guy. Massive crypto bust. 31-year-old Heather Morgan and her 34-year-old husband, Ilya Lichtenstein, were arrested in New York this morning. Just hours after authorities arrest Heather Morgan and Ilya Lichtenstein, the Justice Department announces charges against them for their alleged roles in a conspiracy to launder stolen cryptocurrency taken during the 2016 Bitfinex hack. Today, the Department of Justice has dealt a major blow to cyber criminals looking to exploit cryptocurrency. The value of the 120,000 bitcoins has ballooned from $71 million at the time of the theft to $4.5 billion. This is the largest seizure of cryptocurrency ever by U.S. law enforcement. If convicted, the charges carry a prison sentence of up to 25 years. A federal judge in Washington, D.C. releases Morgan to house arrest on $3 million bond, but orders Lichtenstein held without bail. We call the Bonnie and Clyde of crypto. The headlines stun people who knew them. Everyone started texting each other who knew him, like, get a load of this kind of thing. We're like, no one expected it from him. Again, it's kind of like, you're, it's not surprising that he would be like a relatively successful guy, but there's no hint that he was prone to any kind of criminality. I think he's not a bad person. I think he's probably an opportunist and a greedy one. Total shock. Total shock because it was just um, a wholesale transformation. I think understand that there was something always inside of her that was hungry for success and attention and always kind of looking for an angle. I would love to understand what the specific set of incentives were that pushed her to transform so radically. The public can't get enough of Razzlecon, parsing every TikTok video, Instagram post, and YouTube rap. I'm a bad bitch. Go on, make me a sandwich. The Bitcoin crimes are nothing.
imagine that someone who kind of had such a goofy social media presence could be laundering $4.5 billion worth of Bitcoin was just something that blew people's minds. Gotta say, I've waited for this day. I've waited for this moment where society has finally generated to my level, degenerated. But perhaps one of like the most notorious videos is the fluffy pancakes one. These are famous pancakes. Wow, really fluffy. People have been waiting for years to see who could have possibly been the evil geniuses behind this. And then the first thing you see is that video of her having an episode over pancakes. And the entire internet was just like, really? I taste colored cat food. I tasted her cheeky cat and I'm like, this is pretty good. When, you know, alleged criminals like, like these are, are busted, everybody, especially in the cybersecurity and the hacker community, likes to point to them and say, look at all the mistakes they made. I mean, look at these buffoons. You know, they did try very sophisticated, rare techniques, this dark web thing, the use of Monero, and yet somehow IRS criminal investigators, and I believe almost certainly a company like Chainalysis, were able to cut through all of that and follow the money. The government charges Morgan and Lichtenstein in a detailed criminal complaint, but holds off on indicting them. The evidence is laid out by the government in the complaint shows that both Morgan and Lichtenstein were pretty deeply involved in the criminal conspiracy. I would assume that the defense really would claim that they're two babes in the woods and they just sort of happened to get caught. The complaint accuses Morgan and Lichtenstein of laundering the stolen bitcoins, but not the actual hack. Well, there are a lot of questions here, including who did the original hack here back in 2016, leaving open the possibility that there's more to the story. There's some connection there, right? You don't just wake up one day and your crypto wallet is funded with three and a half billion dollars. So either he was directly involved in it or had some connection to the individual or group of individuals who were behind it. Though defense attorneys have argued the government complaint reveals significant holes, a judge granted a request to waive their client's right to a speedy trial. A sign both sides may be working out a plea agreement. Lichtenstein and Morgan may have at least one bargaining chip, or rather, 7,500. That's the amount of bitcoins the government says they believe the couple still controls in hidden accounts linked to the hack. They're now worth $146 million. This is an important case for the Justice Department because it's a precedent setter. The message to criminals is clear. Cryptocurrency is not a safe haven. We can and we will follow the money no matter what form it takes. Crypto is not going away. We know that. It's certainly going to fluctuate. It's going to have its ups and downs. But for so long... Ilya Lichtenstein remains in federal custody in Alexandria, Virginia. He declined an interview request, writing, I am very familiar with American Greed. In fact, I'm a big fan of the show. On advice of counsel, I cannot comment on the case while it is ongoing. Rest assured, I will have a lot more to say once the case has been resolved. And as for the crocodile of Wall Street, Heather Morgan is on house arrest, a mud puddle of her own making, with strict limits on internet usage. And so, while much of her social media remains online for everyone to see, she can't shape her own story. And for Razzlecon, that may be the worst punishment of all. You can completely create your own destiny with words and software. So that's it for now. Be sure to follow to see more videos. Razzle Dazzle.